Uh, Senator, uh, Senator, for anyone who wants to answer this, I'm wondering actually why you think that more of your colleagues aren't in the room with you right now. Are Senate Republicans kind of tacitly admitting that House Republicans just aren't ready for a spending negotiation early next year? Um, those who are making that point are not doing so tacitly. They're doing so explicitly. And they're doing so explicitly at odds with what House Republicans are saying, including incoming, uh, uh, including Kevin McCarthy, the likely speaker. Um, and so I, I, don't, I don't quite understand how their argument works. I don't understand how they can purport to speak for House Republicans when their words are at odds with House Republicans. I don't understand how they claim that um, what this would produce in the next Congress would be a spending bill that actually spends more than this omnibus would. When, number one, we haven't seen this omnibus. It doesn't yet exist. They haven't bothered even to give us top-line figures, or you. And number two, uh, there's no text. And this is going to be two or 3,000 pages long, as you all know, uh, two or 3,000 pages of appropriations bill language. It, it does not read like a fast-paced novel. Uh, and so th this, uh, this really is trying to rush something that is inherently resistant to being rushed, and bad things happen when it's rushed. So I, I don't, as to why more aren't in here, uh, uh, we got together and decided to hold this. That doesn't mean that we're the only ones who feel this way. I know there are others who agree with us. So we'll take one more question, guys. Yep. <clears throat> If you were to get a short-term CR taking you into the next Congress, what gains or objectives do you think that Republicans could reasonably achieve in a CR or in an omnibus that aren't being achieved in this current package? Well, first of all, we have it, – it's impossible to say with any degree of specificity on what you're talking about because I haven't seen the bill. No one has seen the bill. The bill doesn't exist. We don't know what the top line is. We don't know how many earmarks are in it. In fact, I, it was interesting during our – our steering lunch discussion today, we heard from a member uh, uh, of our conference who was on the Appropriations Committee, who was the ranking Republican on one of the subcommittees of it, who acknowledged that he hasn't seen it, he doesn't know what's in it, and that's kind of a concern. So anyway, to answer your question, it's, it's impossible to state with any degree of specificity or even much approximation how it would be better than that because we don't know what this is. I do, however, believe two things. Number one, um, at least, uh, and I'm not even sure that it would result in an omnibus spending bill being um, acted on only in the next Congress and not this one. If, if my CR passed, they may or may not still have the, the votes to pass the omnibus. I really don't know. But at least if it did pass, uh, uh, it wouldn't be passed under the extortive threat of which I speak, which I find so offensive. And number two, I think we can state with a reasonable degree of confidence that if you go from a Democratic House and a Democratic Senate, and then you transition into a new Congress in which there is a Republican House and a Democratic Senate, there will be more Republican priorities, whether that's, and that's likely to range from everything from the level of spending uh, defense and non-defense alike, to also other substantive policy priorities in it. It's going to be different, and it's more likely to reflect more Republican principles. In fact, I think it's, it's inevitable that that would be the case. There are those in my conference who disagree with that and say the opposite would be true. I struggle with that logic, and, and that's a gross understatement. I, I, I find that an utterly incomprehensible argument to suggest that it could get worse in the next Congress, that it would be more likely to reflect Democratic priorities than the current omnibus, which we still haven't seen. Let, let me close this out by kind of combining an answer to both questions. Um, we can't speak for our colleagues, but uh, the fact that there's maybe a smaller group of us uh, kind of speaks to the fact that the course of process works in terms of getting votes for massive spending. But it doesn't work for the American people in terms of bringing some fiscal sanity to Washington, D.C. So again, we're, we're, we're on the side of fiscal sanity. We're, we're on the side of a process that is transparent so that members and the American public actually understand how the federal government is mortgaging their kids' future. So thank you all for coming. Thanks.